Okay, uh, good morning, everyone, and welcome to uh, today's session. Hopefully, this is the final session, uh, the one now that we're going to discuss today. Uh, let's pray and begin. Uh, I just want to leave it open for anybody on the call to lead in prayer, please. Okay, who would like to lead? Vijay? Okay, sure. Uh, Vijay, you're on mute. I'm 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 i i Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Vijay. Um, so we are now at chapter 14, where we talk about exercising authority over territories and regions. So, uh, so far, we've understood that we have been given spiritual authority. Um, and we have this authority because of what Jesus has done on the cross for us. Now that we are in Christ Jesus, we receive this authority. We can exercise our authority. We have seen that God has also given us weapons of warfare which we can use because we are battling the spiritual realm. Uh, and uh, so we have to do it God's way. So all of this we have seen. Now, we have talked more in terms of, uh, if you remember, we said uh, ground level warfare, strategic level warfare. So uh, primarily administering deliverance to people um, as individuals. Okay? Or maybe even families we have considered. We have talked a little bit about organization and institution here and there. Uh, but in a larger scale, when we talk about ministering deliverance, what are some of the strategies that apply? You know, that, that is what we are uh, talking about. Uh, more uh, so principles uh, rather than strategies. What are the principles that we must be aware of? Uh, so we can exercise authority over territories and regions. Now, when we look at um, examples uh, in, in the Bible, we find, especially in the book of Acts, that we have teams of people who go to cities. Um, and there is an incredible transformation in that city. Uh, there are, uh, uh, you know, initially, even if there, there are no churches, churches are established, a strong work is uh, accomplished in that city, right? From then on, the, the church of the city begins to grow or the citywide church begins to grow. So in today's context, how do we apply this? Uh, for an entire region or a city, how to exercise the authority that God has given us? That's what we are looking at today. Now, when we study, uh, you know, the Great Commission, it's quite clear where Jesus said, you know, go into all uh, the world, make disciples of all nations, right? Baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. And behold, I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. So our calling is a calling to impact, not just my family, my neighborhood, you know, some people whom I know. It's beyond that. It's definitely beyond that. For every believer, God says that you can have influence, you can have authority, um, you know, beyond that. And uh, we have been given, we've studied this in detail, that every believer, I think I uh, said it some time ago, that it's not just for the pastors, right, or the leaders, but every believer can exercise this authority which uh, Christ has given us. Now, we need to understand that um, in the spiritual realm, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ is delegated with the highest authority um, or on the earth. So when we consider this earth, we find, um, you know, in the natural realm, we find institutions, we find um, 
government structures uh, we find civic bodies and they are all bestowed with a level of authority okay we don't deny that in the natural realm they have greater authority because sometimes we don't find that churches and cities are strong enough when we say strong enough influence wise or finance wise um, you can't compare right the government bodies and the churches but what are we saying we are saying spiritually spiritually when we consider the church as far as the bible is concerned you know uh, when we study scriptures we understand that as jesus said you know do you recall um um i will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it so what is he saying he's saying there are two kingdoms the kingdom of light the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of darkness will never be able to overcome the kingdom of light so the kingdom of light and we the church are a part of that kingdom of light the church i will build my church jesus said and it will be a strong church and we see references uh, time to time where you know we are called a, a glorious church a radiant church and so our understanding is that this church this entity that we call as a church is a very strong entity and it has been given the highest authority spiritual authority i mean on the earth and uh, we recognize that it is more powerful right uh, than any other spiritual authority that we know no, functional here on the earth so with this understanding uh, we can expect a transformation when we say transformation um we do look at spiritual transformation but it is more in terms of um, what i'm talking today it it's also in terms of uh, you know social transformation we could be addressing matters of justice we could be uh, addressing matters of uh, inequality we could be addressing matters of infrastructure uh, you know basic amenities for people so many things so transformation in every sense is possible when you know god is a part of that place so i i remember one uh, uh story basically this was uh, uh, on missions when we had gone we had gone to uh, um a place in gujarat and uh, uh, so they had the, they had a testimony of the person who first came to that area uh, and started you know sharing the gospel and all that so th that uh, testimony really impacted me a lot so what they said is this one man he was born again and you know the supernatural power of god was very evident through his life he would pray and miracles will take place so he came to this place uh, but at that time uh, the plot of land which was given to him was um, uh, you know sometimes you uh, it, it's uh, unfertile in, infertile so it uh, basically you can't be very productive as far as agriculture is concerned uh, there wasn't water uh, flowing through that land so many things they shared so it was like that he came and he started not just preaching the gospel but he started uh, uh, you know uh, working on that piece of land so by the time we went he was an elderly gentleman i don't even know how old he was maybe maybe uh, like mid 70s or something like that but uh, we got to hear so many testimonies about you know how things have changed and when we went um, that that whole land uh, they they were growing the place where we were meeting and all that um, area had mango mango trees and uh, it was beautiful because you, you could just see like mangoes hanging on every tree um uh, you know it was green and by that time there was a stream f flowing through um, that uh, uh, land also and uh, so we were asking how did this happen how did this transformation happen so whatever you know 30 40 uh, odd years of uh, that uh, pastor being there and pastor ministering to the people multitudes of people around that area they had come to know about jesus so many leaders were raised up now he was old but he had pastors under him 
so there were pastors under him uh, and not just spiritual transformation but they were telling us about all these um, you know natural things that got affected uh, by uh, the gospel and uh, that place i mean i couldn't believe that uh, it was you know that plants were not growing there crops were not growing there because it was unbelievable it was green and uh, as i told you that section where we visited full of mango trees and you know mangoes were just hanging uh, and it was beautiful so i'm just giving you like uh, what i have experienced and uh, i was amazed that god's word does not only transform the spiritual a part of who we are similarly when it comes to a place or a region um we can expect a greater transformation so even physical you know the way groundwater levels apparently came up over there and uh, you know um, it, it it became so fertile they were having good crops uh, they were growing most of the uh, food which they were cooking they were growing on their own in that place so uh, god can do that and i don't know how many of you have seen this but uh, there is a documentary uh, it's called uh, transformations and it uh, it has compilation of uh, um certain regions where people got together in prayer and when people started praying and in some places it was more like a city wide prayer where you had people from different churches come together uh, you know forget about their you know issues on doctrine and all but just come together pray for the city bless the city um, so in uh, south america uh, there's one particular uh, you know place that this this video captures where um, in a stadium people gathered and they would have overnight worship praise intercessions um and uh, uh, you know just just build up that spiritual atmosphere over the the city um and the result of that in in that documentary you can see it i think it's accessible on youtube as well you see in that video how the crime rates came down in that city how um, it started affecting you know every every aspect of city life uh, even to the degree that uh, in that video they show um, even the vegetables you know that were grown in the region and they they show the size of the vegetables you know they it's humongous it's huge and they're like we've never had uh, such a crop ever before so the point i'm trying to make is that we can experience city transformation uh spiritually morally uh we you know talk about natural natural elements uh god is able to do that you know god the way he says right in second chronicles 7 uh, 14 like if my people if uh, they call by my name if they humble themselves and pray and they seek my face you know turn from their wicked ways then i will hear their prayer and i will heal their land so healing is wholesome uh, and transformation can take place now we may all be concerned about things such as you know crime in the city or uh, we may be concerned about um, a youth of the city not being you know educated in ethical uh, practices or uh, even morally right we we find that people no longer hold on to good values so things deteriorating around us uh, and we should be concerned when when we hear such news uh, however you know from what we can see in the word of god this authority that jesus has given us it's not just to practice you know uh, for deliverance the way we have studied till now but you and i can even use the authority for city transformation okay so uh, as a corporate body or together together when we begin to pray for our city when we begin to declare you know there are many things we have discussed and i'm also going to discuss few more things about how to do this how to see city transformation by using our authority mm, uh, but you know let's first understand that it is possible okay city transformation is possible um, and for this we would need generally what we have seen is when believers come together when pastors come together right churches come together there is more power in 
prayer. There is more power in that kind of a unity. So instead of can one believer pray and can God save the city? Yes, you know. Uh, um, we have talked about how in intercession God is looking for one man to stand in the gap. So with one it is possible, but uh, in practice what we see is whenever we have people coming together in this manner, repenting before the Lord, praying, then uh, the city is impacted in a powerful way. Um, so it we we must pray and along with that some strategic efforts so by that when we say strategic efforts it may mean that we think of we think of uh, having some initiatives right initiatives such as um, let's say for the youth if the values are not good in in a particular place what can be done for the youth right so we run some programs practical once we are praying spiritually all those things are going on but in a practical way in a strategic way uh, maybe some sort of a campus movement would make a difference in the lives of the the youth uh, or the marketplace if we find that that's where god is calling us to make an impact There's something in the area of marketplace business when we do things like that then yeah you know it, it makes an impact so in we need the spiritual part of doing things as well as the wisdom of God to implement strategic um, initiatives. So when both of this go hand in hand, we can see a lasting change and a lasting transformation. Now, when we talk about missionaries, many old missionaries who came, uh, people who came to India, I can think of people like Ida Scudder, uh, you know, Amy Carmichael, when we study their uh, life stories, we find that it's so amazing. You know, they were they were godly people. They were so prayerful. Uh, you still, you know, read what they wrote and some of the songs and uh, all the spiritual things. They were uh, prayerful people, but they also had some initiatives. And today, you know, as we consider some of the things that the strategic uh, wise uh, programs which they implemented even today like I know people who in my generation have come out of the Donavur uh, you know fellowship of Amy Carmichael often children you know were being taken care of from from whatever uh, tens uh, so many decades right so um, I still know people who, who've come out of there and it's still blessing people up until today. You talk about CMC Vellore, it's it's one of the um, most reputed institutions in uh, particularly in Asia. We we highly regard it, right? Ida Skada, she gave her life to start that institution, uh, CMC Vellore. So just some examples, but I'm just saying that spiritual, yes, we have to pray have wisdom from God. He may want to initiate some things. Okay, We have to be open to that. And when we step into the wisdom that God gives us, you know, both work hand in hand. So uh, we are able to make a difference in the lives of people. So we have to take a practical step uh, and uh, make things happen. Okay. Uh, and city transformation is to, uh, there's a statement here which says leveraging our spiritual resources. So leveraging our spiritual resources would mean, you know, understanding what the word of God has to say uh, and also working together with, with other Christians, Christian leaders and everything that God is doing uh, in and through all of us. We kind of use it all uh, to see a change in our city. Okay, so some uh, of the strategies for city transformation as given in our uh, notes here. I'm going to go over it. Please feel free. You can stop me at any point if you have a question or we want some discussion here. Um, well, some strategies are first is live the gospel. Okay, so how to impact the city? We will come to the prayer, all, all those parts, but let's begin with, first of all, live the gospel, right? Because now you see, as Christians, there are a lot of Christians in, in, in many parts of uh, uh, the country, you know, as, as we understand, and especially like the south of India, we can say, yes, there are 
a lot of Christian communities. Um, however, here's the challenge. We are believers, but is our life reflecting the gospel? You know, that's a question we have to ask because when we see Matthew chapter 5, verses 13 to 16, it reminds us we are the salt, we are the light. So we are influencers. Our life should be influencing people positively. Uh, it should bring a kingdom influence. But if we are saying that, yes, there are a lot of people who believe, but there's no influence, then there's something that is missing. Isn't it? So, but we let's let's begin to think this way. Uh, it's important to first of all be salt and light, or be positive influencers. Uh, when we read about the kingdom of God, we see you know a little bit of leaven, leavens the whole batch. It says so. We may be small, but then we can have a mighty influence. We see the parable where uh, we, the believers, are the good seed who are sown uh, in this world where there can be tares or people who don't believe in God, but we still are the good seed and we have a role to play here. We have to stand our ground. We have to live for God. So living the gospel and living it the right way, you know, as we study scripture, we uh, understand that uh, we have to put on the armor of righteousness as per 2 Corinthians 6, 7, and uh, the armor of light, as per Romans 13, 12. So with righteousness as the light, when we live, it will make an impact for God. Uh, and in that way, we can exercise our authority. And what is the next thing? So first is to just live the righteous Christian life that God has given us. Uh, that will make an impact. The second is share the gospel. Share the gospel. So you know, sometimes we just stop with, huh, I'm a good Christian. I am righteous. I do all the right things. I don't want to talk about Jesus. But it that's uh, not something that we see in the example of the early believers. And in the Great Commission, Jesus told us, go into all the world, right? make disciples of all nations how do we make disciples of those who are not disciples yet we have to share the gospel with them and paul writes in romans 1 14 to 16 he writes there that the gospel of god right it it is it is uh, life transforming it's the power of god unto salvation so when we share with somebody that god loves you so much that he sent his only son to die for your sins because nothing else will uh, be able to pay for the sins that mankind has committed. So Jesus died on the cross for you. Uh, he uh, was buried. He rose again. And because of that, now you have salvation. God gives you an invitation to become his child. Would you like to be a child of God? So, you know, we are talking about um, what Jesus has done. And then we give them an invitation to accept Christ into their lives. Now, we may think uh, that, hey, how is this going to make a difference? But as Paul wrote, you know, the uh, gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ is the power of God unto salvation. Now, we don't understand in our logic, you know, how can this work? How can this truth work? But it has the power to transform lives. And which is why we have to learn to communicate it, communicate the gospel to individuals, to communities, to groups. Do it the usual way, you know, the way I, I shared just now. Do it with a testimony. Do it, you know, with... Um, uh, uh, people sometimes use the four spiritual laws. People uh, sometimes just share how good God has been to them. And sometimes just life testimonies about, hey, this happened to me. I was not well and Jesus healed me. Just those testimonies are going to touch people's lives. And we can release the authority of God uh, over people's lives when we share the gospel. So we can even do it in creative ways, right? All of you who are very talented people, media and, uh, you know, video. Uh, so you can use any any form. But the undiluted gospel, as we see it, it's the power of God to transform people's lives. So use the gospel, share the gospel, that demonstrate the gospel. We see that Jesus moved with compassion, Matthew 14, 14. Uh, not only did he know what, he was going to do for the people, but when he saw people in difficulty, 
even before he went to the cross he was moved with compassion he flowed uh, right through the power of the holy spirit setting them free healing them delivering them uh, and, and all that and as we study further what jesus told his disciples is that hey now you go you do it right we we know john chapter 14 verse 12 it says you shall do greater works than these because i go to my father so we are called to demonstrate greater works than these how to do it you know we've talked about it you pray for people you move in the gifts of the holy spirit right so when we do all these things god's power is being released people are being touched the city also will be transformed imagine if everybody in the city was like that praying releasing the gifts of the holy spirit right all the believers equipped well equipped and we are all moving together we are all serving god in different ways it will surely impact the city so demonstrate the gospel and demonstrate the supernatural and we know that once we are baptized in the holy spirit as acts chapter 1 verse 8 shows us that uh, we are able to reveal the power of god we become witnesses right it says witnesses so we become witnesses and we can overcome the power of the enemy. So these are all things that we can do for city transformation. And of course, we have our uh, other um, strategies that we have talked about earlier, things like prayer, intercession, and uh, uh, yeah, walking in righteousness, e exercising our authority through binding, losing. Now, this is very, very important, OK? so. I don't know how many of us have been part of prayers where such prayers have been prayed over the city. But uh, like I've been part of some prayers, just the way we said when we exercise authority, you know, we command, right? When individually we speak to demon powers, we say things like, uh, I command you in the name of Jesus, you know, be gone, be gone. I passed you out in the name of Jesus, right? So we are very firm about that and we speak over those individuals. Similarly, when it comes to the city or the nation, right? Uh, we can speak over our city and uh, nation. So how exactly to, to pray? How exactly to intercede? So we can pray prayers of repentance, first of all. So it will look something like, you know, we we even if we have not done it, let's take for example idolatry or corruption. We can say, Heavenly Father, I come uh, to you in the name of Jesus on behalf of my city, Bangalore, and uh, I repent of uh, uh, idolatry. I repent of uh, you know every um, every worship which is not unto you. I repent of the corruption in my city. I repent of the crimes in my city. So basically, you begin there. Uh, you repent on behalf of the sins of the people and then you know uh, you you begin to ask god lord i pray that you would heal the land you would um, bring restoration that you will revive lives lord um, uh, you know that you would do your you would establish your kingdom here so thy kingdom come we we would pray and ask god to replace uh, all these evil things with the work of god but there's also a place for you can declare, right? You can declare. So uh, you you could declare that uh, my my city, I bless my city with peace. God has given me the authority to bless my city with peace. On the basis of Jeremiah 29, 7, you know, pray for the peace of the city where you have been planted. So you can say, I declare there is peace in my city. Or you can make declarations such as, as, as a watchman on the wall, like Isaiah 62, on the basis of that, you can say, as a watchman on, on the wall, you know, I stop. Uh, every unrighteous uh, unrighteousness uh, you know in in the area of uh, money from entering the city in the i i stop i command so what are we doing you know, we're taking authority and we are also battling uh, against demonic powers don't forget that uh, and as we have discussed earlier when it comes to regions, uh, there are principalities and powers that dominate over regions. Okay. And it's not so, you know, I'm not saying, oh, they are strong, so get scared of them. And, you know, the other individual demons are not strong. It's not like that. Uh, but when we take on principalities, you know, powers uh, and authorities, their strongholds, their fortresses, uh, we 
as a people you know it's always helpful when we all pray together that's why we keep saying you know pastors coming together believers coming together leaders coming together the church praying together it's very powerful because it's a it's a power it's a prayer of agreement across uh, you know uh, hearts and minds and in one accord when we pray uh, it is very effective in dislodging these authorities principalities powers we're talking about hierarchies or demons and demonic authorities in the heavenly places against the city against the region right so that's how we approach it we first repent and then we ask god to establish his kingdom we make declarations lord maybe prophetic words sometimes we have prophetic words over the city lord you said that you are going to make this city uh, a city of rejoicing and not of mourning so what are the prophetic words over the city speak them uh, what are the words in the word of god over the city speak them take authority you can say i stop this i bind this i lose peace over my city i lose you know the presence of god over my city so we can pray prayers like that it's totally fine um but the most effective way of doing this is as a body corporately so uh, for city transformation it is best to do it corporately okay so uh, any any questions so far Okay, no problem. So uh, you can always post your questions on the stream page. It will be available. Okay, thank you. It'll be available. Um, like access to the stream page will be available for you till the end of this course. So if you suddenly think, oh, I, I need clarification, please feel free. You can post there. Mm, I will continue. Uh, so what also we want to... Uh, share at this point is one is because we're talking about you know these demonic powers and spiritual authorities and all that um, we just want to remind us that you know one should not become very demon conscious okay so uh, it's possible that you know we kind of um, become so caught up with uh, oh this demon over the city and that demon and you know i'm praying against this demon so instead of being demon conscious be very god conscious and we can to be god conscious another very important thing we can do when we pray for city transformation is worship right worship um praise so we participate in, in things like that. So when we are praising, worshiping God, the presence of God comes and it takes over, right? And sometimes automatically without even, um, you know, going against a certain power or principality, they automatically get dislodged. They get destroyed because the presence of God has come. The power of God has come. So we can host the presence of God as well. So don't become very demon conscious, devil conscious, but be more God conscious and um, host the presence of God. Then the other uh, important thing for us to remember is uh, spiritual mapping. I think I have mentioned this sometime back to all of us. See, there is a practice, okay, called spiritual mapping. And I think it was made popular by people like Peter Wagner, uh, one of the leading, um, like he, he um, stewarded the apostolic, you know, the truth about the apostolic movement and all that. So they started this concept of spiritual mapping. So in the spiritual mapping, what they do is they... Uh, take the map of the place that they want to pray for and they also figure out which are the demonic strongholds you know over parts of that region so uh, ge geographically they might say oh okay this place um, uh, is affected by the demon of uh, alcohol uh, another portion is affected by you know, some other stronghold there are uh, this kind of this worship going on there so it is this demon that demon so you basically make a map of the different areas and different principalities so then you know who to pray against right now this is good it's helpful to do the spiritual mapping but sometimes people have spent a lot of time just doing this mapping exercise okay and uh, 
it may not be that important to kind of spend so much time making a entire detailed map uh, instead yeah okay we have an idea of which demonic strongholds are there just go ahead pray speak the truth of god's word and you know see the power of god uh, manifest so that's how we would uh, that's what we would suggest like don't become very concerned about spiritual mapping and uh, this other uh, thing that we've said is backlash you know, sometimes when we minister we have this feeling that now that i am um, you know praying for the city now that i am uh, praying against demonic strongholds they will attack me that is backlash fear of backlash so for that as we have stated earlier one is in the book of job we know uh, job says what i have feared has come upon me so when we fear something we are actually opening the door for that to happen in our lives so don't fear don't even imagine that you're going to be attacked because where does it say that it has to happen uh, you know so that that's not biblical so fear will open the door so don't fear second is go by god's word you know luke 10 19 we see that uh, jesus says you will trample on the you know like the scorpions and the serpents and uh, nothing by any means shall hurt you so he's already said that nothing by any means shall hurt you and um, uh, it says 1 john 5 18 those who are walking with the lord in righteousness that mm, the evil one cannot touch you so how many more scriptures do we need to understand that hey we are already protected we already have uh, you know god's covering on our lives and satan cannot do anything to us we can stand against the wiles of the devil as uh, ephesians 6 16 says so no need to be afraid we can take our position and as we do this you know god can transform our land he can transform our city there's a beautiful example here uh, in our notes it talks about um, a place called uh, hebron okay so hebron is a place of friendship a place of um, you know association but before it was hebron it was known as kirjat arba and Kirjat Arba is a place where um, there were giants, okay? And uh, it was not a pleasant place. People would be scared to go to that place. However, we find in scripture that um, in Joshua chapter 14, Caleb is a man of faith and a man of courage. He says, okay, give me my portion uh, of, of the land. And he takes that portion of the land and he goes against the giants right so he displaces all the giants and when that happens uh, the place is transformed and it is renamed from kirbat kirjat arba which is a place of the giants it becomes transformed into a place known as hebron a place of friendship right so even our cities they can be the place where there are giants of corruption or all kinds of evil but we can see to these places being transformed as a place of worship as a place of righteousness you know as the place of god's presence now uh, if we can go against the enemy in the right ways and uh, you know uproot strongholds uh, city transformation or regional transformation can take place so that's uh, a little bit about city transformation i'll now uh, jump to the next subject here and if you all have any questions, you can always stop and ask. Uh, so this last section is about some key things to keep in mind. First is boundaries. Um, yes, we have spiritual authority, but you know we should not be in error uh, when we think that, oh, I have all authority on heaven and earth. Jesus said, you know, it's mine. I give it to you. We have the authority, but God honors boundaries. Okay, so um, let's say God's plan for the human race. I cannot use my spiritual authority to change it. Jesus had to come. Now, if somebody wanted to stop Jesus from coming to the earth, he cannot use their authority to stop it. Now, Jesus is going to come back, second coming, and uh, you know the end times, things that are going to take place. Can I stop 
God from doing what he has planned for the earth cannot. So spiritual authority is not meant for that. So we cannot oppose the plans of God. We cannot go against the written word of God. Okay, uh, That is a given that we understand. Now, when it comes to people, okay, the, over there also, controlling and manipulating people with the help of our authority, for example, as a parent, I want to control my child. Or as a spouse, I want to control my spouse. I want to control, as a pastor, I want to control the people in the church. Can I use my authority to do that? No, you cannot, because spiritual authority is not uh, meant for that. And that's not the right use of spiritual authority. It is what we call as violation. Violation is, it is against the legal rules. When you try to use spiritual authority to do, do all these um, you know, wrong things outside of the boundaries. So uh, we have to be careful. And even when there is unbelief, you find that Jesus, you know, sometimes there are those statements in the Gospels where Jesus went and he wanted to heal the people, but he could not do anything because of their unbelief. So even unbelief is a boundary. When there is unbelief, God wants to do, but it's not happening. You see? So uh, God's authority, you could say, it will not work effectively if we uh, don't honor boundaries. But when people are being controlled, you know, spiritually, what is that? What is that uh, called? Uh, it has a you know, not so nice term to it. It's called witchcraft, right? That's what people do in witchcraft. What they do is they use spirits to control people, to control things the way they would like it. So that's spiritual manipulation. Uh, but we as believers, that's not our spiritual authority. We, I mean, that has nothing to do with what we are talking about because God has given all of us free will and he has defined the boundaries. Within our boundaries, our spiritual authority will work beautifully we have to be careful about that now what about failures you know last class we had that discussion what if i pray and i try to cast out a demon or i've prayed so many times for revival so many times for city transformation pastor nothing has happened you see when failures happen or you may call it a failure or you may call it a disappointment or you may still be waiting to see the change see there is a learning experience Right? for those who want to learn. So when things are not working, we can pray and ask God, Lord, help me to understand why. Why is it not working? Should I do something different? Is there uh, some unbelief I have to deal with? Right, The way in Matthew 17, the disciples went and asked Jesus, why could we not cast out the demon? And then Jesus gives them an answer. Such kind shall not go out except by prayer and fasting. So in that way, we can try to learn could have been the issue. Now, the issue could have been, uh, you know, that's not the moment. You don't, you don't understand the mind of God in that moment. And then you step ahead of God. So something didn't take place or faith is lacking or maybe sin. There is some unconfessed sin that is not dealt with. Or as we have said, right, like uh, in deliverance steps, dedications which were unbroken, pledges, allegiances which are still not broken. So legally, Satan holds them. But when you break those things, it happens. Deliverance happens easier. So we have to figure out what is it? Why is it not happening? Then um, sometimes we deal with the symptom. So uh, we pray over the person. They seem better, but we didn't deal with the root cause. We didn't uproot right? The actual issue, uh, like a dedication or something, we never revoked it. And so the problem repeats itself. So in this way, we can learn why, why, is, why am I not getting success uh, in this deliverance? And learn from it and keep moving forward. Uh, and close all entry points. We've said that so when we do that, again, you know, demons come out easier. They don't re-enter the person. Post-ministry uh, care, post-ministry suggestions are also important. Uh, then one thing that we want to add here is, you know, sometimes we may not get the answer to all our questions, right? Like we all have questions. I prayed it didn't happen. Why it didn't happen? 
right maybe for years we are asking god what did i do wrong why did why did i not get the answer but you know uh somewhere there is that space in our relationship with god where we may not have all the answers right we may get the answers later or we may not get the answers but whether we know fully or we don't you know understand the answers to these questions which we are asking one should be maturing in god to such a degree that you say okay god i know the truth of your word and you, that doesn't change if you said you're a healer you're a healer healing didn't take place but i don't understand it but it's fine you know i still trust your truth i still keep going forward with your truth so we should be okay to live peacefully with unanswered questions sometimes uh, that also is important okay so uh, just uh, um and yeah finally do it the jesus way and remember that uh, satan is already defeated he is under our feet and uh, you and i can exercise the authority that god has given us so with that i'm going to stop here uh, any questions any points for discussion Okay, so uh, yes, you could all uh, just study this further, think about it, and if you have questions, please post it on the stream page. Um, and I'm hoping to post your assignments today. And as I have stated earlier, the um, uh, you know, like I expect you to do it all by yourself without any discussions with other friends. So please uh, take some time out. Uh, sit by yourself whatever you know you answer and you will be marked or the marks which i'm going to take are the marks of your first attempt because i noticed in the previous um, uh, assignment there were a couple of attempts you know that people had done so there was some confusion uh, but yeah the first attempt marks are going to be taken so it's an exam you uh, look at whatever is posted you please sit by yourself and i want your answers okay uh, so please keep that in mind um, and uh, yeah with that second assignment we are through with our course uh, and uh, i'm still available accessible through the stream page through emails uh, if you have to ask anything uh, clarify something please feel free to reach out to me so uh, we shall pray and close for this class and i just want to request somebody on the group to kindly go ahead and pray please for this last class Okay, how about I, I just pray and close. Yeah, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for the truth of your word. Father, for the understanding of the work of the cross, that Lord, we have the authority we need, Lord, to live victorious um, against Satan, all his schemes, all his attacks. And so, Father God, I pray in the name of Jesus that each one of us, Lord, Father, every student here um, and the families that they represent, God, that, Lord, they will live uh, victorious, Father God, that, uh, Lord, they, uh, I declare, God, that they overcome, Lord, Lord, every uh, work of the evil one and, and the power and the authority of the kingdom flows through them wherever they go, Lord. And, Father, I just pray that... Um, each of us will be strengthened, Lord, uh, in the area of prayer, in the area of intercession, understanding your word, speaking your word, declaring your word. Father God, I pray, God, that uh, uh, Lord, uh, truly, Lord, in, in our everyday circumstances, we are going to see a, a mighty victory. And not just that, Lord, uh, Father, what we've studied today about city transformation through each one of us, Lord, I pray, 
let there be a transformation in the place where you have called us lord jesus we thank you lord we thank you that you are at work uh, through our lives god and father i just bless every student i pray continue to pray for your wisdom and your understanding upon their lives uh, strengthen them lord even as they take up their uh, final assignments and father god let your name be glorified through each of them in jesus name we pray amen uh all right class thank you so much have a blessed day and uh, we shall um, you know stay in touch online through the mails and everything so god bless bye for now thank you